Good afternoon and uh, welcome to Dewsbury Team Parish and to our Zoom Nativity. Um, it's uh, caused a little bit of uh, confusion as the Zoom Nativity because people have been thinking that they need to join us on Zoom this afternoon. But um, as you'll see uh, when we uh, get going, uh, it's just the performers who've been uh, putting together uh, their, uh, their pieces on Zoom. And so um, I hope you're uh, ex as excited as I am as to uh, see the, uh, the full theme. And so uh, we're going to uh, we're going to share uh, the story of the nativity with you in a few moments. I've just been told that the volume is not uh, not too high. Is that correct? Is anybody else experiencing that? Let me see if I can uh, make a difference uh, to that. I don't know if that's uh, any better. Perhaps someone can uh, let me know uh, whether it is. I'd hate for you to uh, to miss anything and not be able to hear anything. I've done my best to to make sure that all the uh, um, all the participants are in good voice uh, this afternoon. Oh, good now. Thanks, Neil, for that. Um, it's always uh, good to know that we're uh, we're doing things uh, right. Before we, uh, before we join our uh, Zoom nativity, let's, uh, which is entitled, just by the way, When God Showed Up, uh, let's, uh, let's just pray as we begin. Christ has brought us out of darkness to live in his marvellous light. Brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our Zoom Nativity today, because we've come together in the presence of God, our Father, to rejoice in the gift of Jesus to us as the light of the world, to hear and receive the story and message of the coming of Christ, and to offer to God our thanksgiving in prayer and song. And so, Father God, just come among us now by your Spirit and help us to welcome Jesus into our hearts afresh this day. In his name we pray. Amen. So, um, I hope you enjoy our Zoom nativity. There's an old Jewish expression that goes like this. People make plans. God laughs. We think we know what's going to happen, and we really don't. Sounds familiar. We have plans, but God shows up with other plans. And sometimes he shows up in person. A couple of thousand years ago, there was another very weird year. And if they'd had the internet back then, maybe the Christmas story would have gone like this. It all started when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Herod? It's Quirinius! You're on mute! Doesn't matter, you don't need to talk. Just listen. All those plans you had for feasts and games and everything. Cancel him. God just showed up. And by God, I mean Augustus Caesar. He just sent out an order that everyone must go to their hometown to be registered. I know. Admin. Nightmare. Stop crying. Eric, just get it done. Steve? Steve? Joseph, you're on mute, you're on mute, press the, press the, oh no, you see that button on the, oh it don't matter, it don't matter, look, can you mind the workshop for me and finish turning these shepherds crooks, I know, I'm sorry, I was going to do them myself, but I've got to go back to Bethlehem to be registered, and I'm taking Mary, well, 
she ain't technically my wife, but long story short, God showed up in a dream. I know it sounds a bit weird, but I haven't been eating cheese, honest. This angel said, it's all straight up like, Mary's going to have a baby and I'm going to call him Jesus. Well, apparently it means God saves. Anyway, sorry to drop in it, but I've got problems too. I don't have any luggage that fits on a donkey for a start. Oh, and by the way, do you think you can feed cats, Steve? Thanks, then. Thanks a lot. See you later. Bye. Mum? Hi, Mum. Is that you? Sorry, dear. You are on mute. Could, could you just... Oh, never mind. I'll just talk then. Mum, I don't have long because Joseph is coming round and we are going to Bethlehem together. Yes, I know, all the way south for the census. But Joseph is from Bethlehem, from the city of David. You knew that, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, Mum, I've got more news. I'm actually having a baby. Yes, I know, it wasn't planned for it so soon, but God showed up and then we had to change our plans too. God actually sent an angel to talk to me. It was a normal day. I was just making flatbread, as I'm doing now. And there was this angel speaking to me and telling me I would be pregnant, give birth to a son, and I should call him Jesus. And the angel said, he will be a great king, like our ancestor David, like King David. But he actually said he will be even greater than that. He will be called the Son of the Most High. And he will rule forever over our people. His kingdom will have no end. He will rule for eternity. And, you know, I was quite stunned. I really didn't know what to say. And after a while, I said, here I am. I am the servant girl of the Lord God. And let everything happen to me as you have told I thought that was perhaps the right thing to say at the time, Mum. Don't you think so? Um, okay, I have to rush. Love you. Bye. I'm off to Bethlehem. Yes, I bring you a souvenir. You take care. Bye. Casper! Casper! You're on mute! Don't worry. There's no time to talk. We've got to pack for a long journey west. Yes, I know that you wanted to go to that party because the stars say you may be lucky in love. Plans have changed. God showed up. I'm losing you, Melchior. Ah, oh, that's better. Melchior, look out of the window. It's the brightest star you've ever seen. Wow. Just look at it. It's like something coming out of heaven. You only get this once in a, well, ever. <laughs> anyway, remember where God's people came from, Casper? Yes, Israel. We need to go there. And I get this feeling that we need to pack some stuff. Gold, incense, and um, you got any myrrh? Put that in as well. Oh, and maybe a rattle, cowpole, and some formula. Anyway. Malquire, you get the camels ready. I'll meet you both first thing. And don't be late. Marcus? Marcus? You're on mute. Ha! <laughs> That's on purpose because I'm the king. I tell you what to do and I don't care what you have to say. Listen, it's bad enough if I had to cancel that big feast I was planning because of the census. And now this. I was planning another feast to celebrate how brilliant a king I am. And then these three men from the east turn up wanting to see the king. And when I said, well, you found him, bow down and help yourself to some chicken. They said they were looking for a baby who was born to be king of the Jews. They saw his star in the east and came to worship him. They say that God showed up. 
I'm the king of the Jews. Ask Cornelius. My son is to be the next king, not this baby. Marcus, I don't care how you do it or what you have to do, but find that baby. Yes, yes, you're on mute. We can't hear you. Oh, never mind. I'm pretty speechless myself. Oh, something amazing has just happened. We've been out on the hills, you know, telling each other scary stories. I was telling that one about uh, how David's got Goliath. <laughs> These are the really good glasses. It always cracks me up. Yeah. Well, then God showed up and everything changed. There was this massive army of, of angels and they were all singing. And what were they saying? They were saying that same as been born in David's time. He's crying to God. Oh, and, and you'll find him in, in a manger wrapped in cloth. We should go and have a look. Yeah, so, Jeff, would you find the flock? No trouble. Well, usually they're no trouble. Anyway, you can borrow the crook. Those ones that Joseph said he was going to bring. They've not turned up. It's a bit weird. Anyway, we're off now, Jeff. See you later. Bye. Hey. Hello, Dad. I can see you, but I can't hear you. You're on mute. It doesn't matter because you're an ox. So you can't talk. I can, which is weird. But then, right now, everything is weird. There I was, settling down for the night in the stable, when these two humans showed up. They had a donkey, which started to eat my dinner. Not fair. And then, there was a big commotion and screaming and shouting and a third human showed up. A really small one, like a human calf, although he was the size of a lamb. And you know what they did with him? They put him in my feeding trough. Am I supposed to eat him? I may have four stomachs, but I can't eat that. I'm a herbivore. Then some shepherds showed up, but I don't have to listen to them. And these wise men came from the east with very odd presents. And now it's quiet again. But I just wanted to say, send some hay, because what's left is now bedding. Hay? The bedding? Talk about posh! Who does this baby think he is? Anyway, I'm hungry! Send food! Hi Mum, I've left you on mute because he has finally fallen asleep. Mum, he is perfect! I know everybody says that about their babies, but this one really is. We call him Jesus, Mum. I know you like Zerubbabel, but that's not what the angel said. The angel said Jesus. But did you know he has another name too? He also is known as Emmanuel, God with us. You see, Mum, despite all our plans and changes of plans, God did show up, and God is with us. Hi, everybody. I was working in my office, and the lights have gone out. I must have had a power cord. It's really, really dark in here. You know, for some people, darkness is really scary. And for some people this year, it's been a really scary year. With Covid and all that things that have caused so much anxiety and 
struggles and sadness. This darkness, it reminds me of one of my favourite songs. These are the words. Light of the world, you stepped down into darkness, opened my eyes, let me see beauty that makes this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above, humbly you came to the earth you created. All for love's sake become poor. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say, Oh my God, you're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. It's a beautiful song, one of my favourite songs of all time. Wonder. I'm going to get rid of this darkness in this office. I know, I, I've got a candle. I think I'll light the candle. Let's see what happens. like the light of the candle. Just look at the candle for a moment. See the beautiful light that it brings. Now I can see all around my office. You see the light just gets rid of all the darkness. But you know, thinking about that song, I wonder, did Jesus really come into the world? And was he really God? And, and why? Why should God need to come into the world? I wonder. I wonder, wow, it's better the lights have come back on. How good it is to have light around us. You know, there was once a farmer who didn't believe in Jesus and one dark snowy Christmas Eve, his wife went to a service at the local church and she said come along with me husband and the husband simply refused he said that story is nonsense why would god lower himself to come to earth as a man that's ridiculous so off she went to the service and the farmer stayed at home and a while later the evening got darker and darker and the winds grew stronger and the snow turned into a blizzard. And the man looked out of the window and all he saw was a blinding snowstorm. And he sat down to relax for the evening when all of a sudden there was a loud bump on the windows. He looked round. And there was another bump on the window and he looked out but he couldn't see more than a few feet away. When the snow let up a little he ventured outside a bit and to see what had hit his window. And in the field near his house he saw a flock of geese. Apparently 
they'd been flying south in the winter and they got caught in the snowstorm and they got all disorientated. They were lost and stranded on his farm with no food or no shelter. And they just flapped their wings and flew around the field in, a low, in low circles, just blindly, aimlessly, and a couple of them had flown into the window. The man felt so, so sorry for these geese and he wanted to help them and he decided that the barn would be the best place for them to shelter. Um, so he, he walked over to it and he opened the door barn wide. And then he watched and waited, hoping that they would notice and walk in to the barn to safety. But the geese just fluttered around aimlessly and they didn't seem to notice the barn or realise what it could mean for them. And so the man tried to get their attention, but that just seemed to scare them and they moved further away. And he went into the house and turned with, back with some bread and he broke it up and made a breadcrumb trail leading to the barn. Surely that will get them into the safe barn. Well, the geese didn't catch on at all. And now he... The farmer was getting really frustrated. He, he got behind them and tried to shoo them toward the barn, but they only got more scared and they scattered everywhere, in every direction, except towards the barn. Nothing he could do could get him, the, the geese, to a place of safety and warmth. Why don't they follow me? He thought to himself. Can't they see that that's the only place where they can survive the storm? And he thought for a moment, and he realised that they just wouldn't follow him because he was a human being. If, if only I were a goose, then I could save them, he thought to himself. And then he had an idea. He, he went to the barn and got one of his geese, carried it into his arms as he circled around behind the wild geese and then released it. His goose flew through the flock, straight into the barn, and one by one the geese followed him to safety. Later that evening he stood silently for a moment as the words he'd spoken a few minutes earlier started to play on his mind. If only I were a goose then I could save them, he'd said. Then he thought about what he'd said to his wife earlier. Why would God want to be like us? That's ridiculous. And then suddenly it all made sense. That is what God has done. We were like the gullet geese. We were blind. We were lost. We were perishing. And God sent his son to be like us. So he could show us the way and save us from our darkness. That was the whole meaning of the birth of Jesus. And the farmer began to realise that. As the winds and the snow died down, he reflected on what had happened. And suddenly he understood why God came as a human being. Jesus. Jesus, who the Bible says is Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus, who said about himself, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not live in darkness, but have life everlasting. I am the light of the world, says Jesus. Follow me. If the world is feeling dark at this time, come to Jesus the light of the world. 
You know, Jesus didn't stay a young, tiny baby. He grew up. He grew up into a strong man. And then he died on a cross. And the Bible says that when he was on the cross, all the wrong things that we had done were placed on his shoulders. And because of that, we can be forgiven if we trust and believe in Jesus, that he died for us. Wow. He takes all our darkness on the cross and he fills us with his light that's what the message of Jesus born as a baby is all about I wonder I wonder if you can trust in this Jesus I wonder if you need light in your life at this time. Jesus says, turn to me and I will give you the light, the goodness that you need in this dark and difficult time. Thank you for listening. Just bear those things in mind and maybe you might one day, even today, want to decide to follow Jesus, who is the light of the world. Thank you, uh, Neil, and thank you too to uh, all our contributors uh, this evening uh, for our Nativity story and uh, for that uh, message. And maybe for the first time you've decided to, to follow Jesus, uh, the light of the world, Jesus who died on the cross for you and for me, so that we may be forgiven, so Jesus can bring light into the dark things in your life. Jesus who rose again from the dead and who conquered death itself. Maybe that's you at the moment. And if it is, and you've decided to, to follow him, why not press your red heart and say that your heart wants to join Jesus' heart today? Just join if you want to do that. It's entirely up to you. Press the red heart on your uh, Facebook as you join us today. Just say, I want to follow Jesus. Some hearts going up there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for those people who've said they're following you. And so if you've given your heart to Jesus for the first time, why not get in touch? Let Neil or myself know. We're gonna, we'll send you, if you if you want, a booklet, a booklet which will help you to grow in your trust of Jesus. Jesus, who is the light of the world. We'll continue in a short time of prayer. Let us pray. For seeing and all knowing God, the source of all life and love, we worship you this Christmas for coming to us in Jesus as a helpless child, so that we might see and know you. We thank you, generous God, for offering us the gift of life in all its fullness, in Jesus' birth and loving ministry, and in his death and resurrection. In prayer, we offer to you our mixed feelings at this Christmas time, our happiness, our sadness, our sometimes weary excitement, Perhaps our 
anxious searching for Christmas joy. Forgive us, though, when we lose sight of the generosity of your Christmas love and help us to accept it graciously so that we may find your true peace again. So we pray to you, Emmanuel, God with us, because you came to us as a child in need and still meet us in the needs of others. And so we bring to you in prayer the suffering of the people of your world, and especially for all at this time who are affected by the coronavirus. The suffering of those who we know who are ill. Of those who have been bereaved. And we remember those who are lonely or anxious. And all who will find this Christmas difficult. Help us, we pray, to show your Christmas love to our world, to tell of your good news for all humankind. Amen. I hope you've enjoyed our Zoom nativity. Um, just before I leave you and bid you a happy Christmas Eve, uh, just to remind you that sadly we've no service at midnight in the Minster this year. We do have a service tomorrow morning in the Minster at 10.30 a.m., to which I hope you will be able to join us. If not in person, then please feel free to join us online, as you have done this afternoon. If you are going to join us tomorrow morning, we do need to let know, uh, we do need to let you do need to let us know, uh, so that we can expect you, uh, because we have a limited number of seats available. But can I just take this opportunity before a final blessing, of wishing you a very happy, healthy, and safe Christmas on behalf of everyone here in the Dewsbury Team Parish. And so some final words of blessing. So may the Lord bless you and watch over you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord look kindly on you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you remain with you now and always. Amen. Merry Christmas everyone. I'll leave you with um, the words of a carol, O Holy Night.